Hi, I'm Scott Davis. I live in Harford County, Maryland. A couple weeks ago, I put together a YouTube video that explains solar and shows some of the solar projects that we have going here at the house. If you haven't seen that video, I really encourage you to take a look. It covers a lot of information in general terms. As a result of that video, I've gotten a lot of questions on our PEX collector that we use for solar hot water heating and solar space heating. I put together a video presentation of the images that we took along that build process that I think is going to answer a lot of those questions in a lot more detail. I hope you enjoy this. First, here's the segment from our Solar 101 video tour on our PEX collector. Then I'll take you through a step-by-step -step pictorial of the construction process. Behind me is our 24 foot by 8 foot solar collector. It's 192 square feet. It's used for hot water heating and also space heating in the winter time. This collector is built at a very high tilt angle. The reason we did that is there's plenty of heat in the summertime. The only thing you're doing with heat is heating your domestic hot water if you choose to go that route. What I wanted not, is not only to heat our domestic hot water, but to put a serious dent in the wintertime heating bills. So I built this to maximize the winter sun. In January, the sun tracks low across the sky. You want a nice high tilt angle to maximize that heat. And that's why this is designed the way that it is. This collector is simply PEX pipe, which is just a flexible tubing. It's under aluminum flashing. It's painted black. It just runs in a serpentine pattern through the collector. Fluid comes down from the house through a pipe, uh, four inch PVC conduit that I have buried in the ground. It runs through the collector back up to the house. In the house, I have a thermal storage tank that I use to preheat our domestic hot water. And I also draw out that heat in the winter time to heat a portion of our home. This collector was really easy to build. I have yet to solder copper pipe. Not that that's hard, but I haven't even had the need. Tax will connect with shark white fittings. It just pushes on, they don't leak, and you can use those to connect to copper as well. So this was a really easy build. It's something anyone can do, and it provides a lot of nice heat. After lots of success with my previous solar projects, I decided it was time to get serious and build big. The first step was to choose a site that had lots of sun, but was out of the way of our other activities and had the best overall appearance. I spent months just walking around the house imagining different locations and designs in my mind. After lots of consideration, I opted to build a ground mounted panel in the backyard by the tree line. The advantages are that it's completely out of the way, it's neighborhood friendly, and being ground mounted, very easy to construct. Really, the only disadvantage was the day it took to dig the 100 foot trench by hand with shovel out to the panel, but that was really good exercise. I'm really pleased with my placement decision and everything about this project, which turned out to be a huge amount of fun to build and an activity that the whole family enjoyed. Here's a step-by-step -step pictorial of our build process. We begin by setting the back posts for the panel. They are 8 foot 4x4s four of pressure treated lumber set 2 feet into the ground. Initially we just dug the holes with a post hole digger, put them in and packed the dirt back around. But after giving that some thought I did go back later and dug around them and put some concrete around each post just to give it that extra level of stability. Then we added the front posts and connected them with 2x4s. All lumber is pressure treated. There's roughly 2 feet 10 inches between the front and back posts to get the 60 degree angle that we wanted for optimizing the winter sun angle. Now digging by hand with the post hole digger and hitting the occasional root rock the posts are not exact, but it's easy to compensate. When you connect the front and back posts with 2x4s, do the far left and far right ones first. Tie a string between the two at the tops and bottoms, and then position the rest of the 2x4s up or down on the posts as needed to make a nice straight line. You may have to cut the top edges of some of the posts after you attach the 2x4s, but that's easy because the 2x4s act as a guide for your handsaw. 
Once the placement of the panel was settled, the next step was to dig a trench out to the panel to run the fluid back and forth and our controlling wires as well. Now, since everything was contained in 4-inch PVC conduit, that really wasn't too, ba too big of a job because we only had to dig down about 8 inches. And we waited until after a rain, the ground was nice and soft, and my son Brad and I were able to dig the entire trench, about 100 feet, in a day. Filling the, tr the trench back in was real easy. Uh, it was just a matter of raking the dirt and placing the sod back in. And by the end of summer, there was no evidence that we had ever dug the trench at all. The next step was making the heat absorber plates. I couldn't find any 8 inch wide flashing locally, so I ordered about 8 50 foot rolls from Amazon. I built the form to bend them out of 2x4s, and I got a 5 8 inch steel rod, 3 foot long from Home Depot, to bend the flashing into shape to fit around the pecs. Now the real fun begins. With all the parts, it's time to start building. The panel itself only took two weekends to complete and that was with time to spare. Note the low-tech, highly functional string method of keeping everything aligned. Once the first piece was in place, the rest lined up easily. I cut one of the 4x8 sections of plywood in half on the top section. That way, the whole structure is tied together between the bottom and top. Then we added the frame with 2x6s and laid in the insulation. No, this isn't out of order. Um, we then added another layer of plywood to attach the pecs to. Another option would have been to use OSB board, which would have worked fine and had been less expensive. The next step was to attach the pecs and flashing. Each piece of flashing has silicon caulk run through the groove to eliminate any air gaps. Now caulk is an insulation itself, but it will conduct a little better than air and we want as good a thermal bond as we can possibly create. I had hoped to use a staple gun to staple the flashing, but the one I had at that time did not penetrate the flashing very well. So I use screws to hold the flashing down. I later did go back and put staples in to try to get a tighter bond, but I didn't really notice any difference in the performance numbers after doing that. To paint the collector, we first rolled it and then used spray paint to touch it up and that covered a little bit better. Now it's just a matter of attaching the Sun Tough glazing that we purchased from Home Depot. Sun Tough is really easy to work with. Um, we spray painted the wiggle strips that the Sun Tough sits on black, and we also put in some 2x2s where the Sun Tough overlaps for additional support. I am really excited about this project. I'm getting about a 30 degree Fahrenheit rise at a gallon per minute from the collector, and it warms my 200 gallon thermal storage tank from about 85 degrees to 120 degrees Fahrenheit in about four hours. The tank typically gets to between 120 to 130 Fahrenheit each sunny day. And that's a lot of free heat, which is exciting. I'm also completely satisfied with the frame, its sturdiness, placement of the yard, and overall appearance. And what's also neat is I can easily retrofit the frame to any internal heat gathering design I like. Thanks for taking the time to watch our solar construction slideshow. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have more questions, I'd love to answer them. And you can email me on our Simply Solar email group. I'd love to chat with you more about it. So please feel to join if you're not a member already. Thanks so much. I hope you have a great day.